Good morning and welcome to Trinity Parish on this seventh day after the Epiphany. If you are joining us online, the bulletin can be found either in our newsletter or in the comments section of our social media pages. And you are most welcome in worship with us. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Be with you. Let us pray together the colic for today. O oh Lord, you have taught us that without love, whatever we do is worth nothing. Send your Holy Spirit and pour into our hearts your greatest gift, which is love, the true bond of peace and of all virtue, without which whoever loves is accounted dead before you. Grant this for the sake of your only Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Genesis. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph, is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him, so dismayed were they at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, come closer to me, and they came closer. He said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here, for God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there are five more years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to keep alive for you many survivors. So it was not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me a father to Pharaoh and Lord of all his house and ruler over all in the land of Egypt. Go, er, hurry and go up to my father and say to him, thus says your son Joseph, God has made me Lord of all Egypt. Come down to me, do not delay. You shall settle in the land of Goshen, and you shall be near me, you and your children and your children's children, as well as your flocks, your herds, and all that you have. I will provide for you there, since there are five more years of famine to come, 
so that you and your household and all that you have will not come to poverty. And he kissed his brothers and wept upon them. And after that, his brothers talked with him. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. The response is Psalm 37, and we'll say it responsively by verse. Do not fret yourself because of evildoers. Do not be jealous of those who do wrong. Put your trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on its riches. Commit your way to the Lord and put your trust in him, and he will bring it to pass. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Refrain from anger, leave rage alone. Do not fret yourself, it leads only to evil. The doer should be cut off. Those who wait upon the Lord shall possess the land. In a little while, the wicked shall be no more. You shall search out their place, but they will not be there. Only shall possess the land. They will delight in abundance of peace. But the deliverance of the righteous comes from the Lord. He is their stronghold in time of trouble. Oh. Rescue them from the wicked. The second reading for today is from 1 Corinthians. Someone will ask, how were the dead raised? With what kind of body did they come? Fool, what you sow does not come to life unless it dies. And as for what you sow, you do not sow the body that is to be, but a bare seed, perhaps of wheat or some other grain. But God gives it a body as he has chosen, and to each kind of seed its own body. So it is with the resurrection of the dead. What is sown is perishable. What is raised is imperishable. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a physical body. It is raised a spiritual body. If there is a physical body, there is also a spiritual body. Thus it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. But it is not the spiritual that is first but the physical, and then the spiritual. The first man was from the earth, a man of dust. The second man is from heaven. As was the man of dust, so are those who are of the dust. And as is the man of heaven, so are those who are of heaven. For just as we have borne the image of the man of dust, we will also bear the image of the man of heaven. What I am saying, brothers and sisters, is this. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Jesus said, I say to you that listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you. And if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. If you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love your enemies, do good and lend, expecting nothing in return, your reward will be great. And you will be children of the Most High, for God is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Hurt not others in ways that you yourself would find hurtful. Never impose on others what you would not choose for yourself. One who is going to take a pointed stick to pinch a baby bird should first try it on himself to feel how it hurts. As you would have people do to you, do to them. And what you dislike to be done to you, don't do to them. What is hateful to you, do not do to your fellow. This is the whole Torah. The rest is the explanation. Go and learn. So those are only five versions of the many versions that are common in all the world's religions and faith traditions of what is known as the golden rule. The golden rule and Jesus's version, which he takes directly from his own Hebrew tradition, love one another as I have loved you, is unpacked by him in our gospel today. And he elaborates about this kind of golden love, which includes loving those who don't love you, and more so, love your enemies. Don't judge or condemn, forgive and be forgiven. And then, enact love. Do good for the sake of good, not reward. Give away freely what you do not need. And what can be the most difficult of all to follow, turn the other cheek. What we hear in Jesus' teachings today, as well as the Buddhist, Islamic, Yoruban, Jewish, and Confucianist versions that I read earlier, is that to get to this kind of love, there's a choice. 
to try to see and experience each other in the way that God sees, and we call that compassion. And we call it the way God sees through love, kindness, and mercy. The foundation of the golden rule calls us to engage the love of self first. A love that's not arrogant, ego-based, or falsely proud, but a love that is compassionate for who and how we are as individuals, trying, trying to live into our full spectrum of humanity. To be able to follow through with choosing love and compassion for others is based on how those qualities are nurtured within us, with God's help. When the author and religious scholar Karen Armstrong won the TED Prize for her remarkable talk on compassion, based on her research into the global commonality of the golden rule, she used her prize money and fame to found the Charter for Compassion. It's an organization and the charter is a document signed by thousands of religious leaders and thinkers from around the world that affirms the essential need for compassion. That document names that the principle of compassion lies at the heart of all religious, ethical, and spiritual traditions, calling us always to treat all others as we wish to be treated ourselves. Compassion impels us to work tirelessly to alleviate the suffering of our fellow creatures, to dethrone ourselves from the center of our world and put another there, and to honor the inviolable sanctity of every single human being, treating everybody without exception, with absolute justice, equity, and respect. So how do we practice compassion, especially for our enemies? Jesus gives us some clues, some important practices. Pray for your enemies. Bless them. Ask God to grant them what you want for yourself. And what this practice can do is to take our enemy out of the realm of other and into our common humanity. Then we can glimpse, even briefly, a nanosecond maybe, that the one who hurt us, maybe like us, is also in need of peace, of joy, of healing, and an abundance of love in their life. So when we can peek into this truth, just peek, it's so hard sometimes, we are engaging compassion. And this practice, I can attest from my own efforts, might take a long, long time before we can see our enemy is one who is deserving of anything good, much less my compassion. And the practice of extending compassion to someone does not erase years of abuse or the damage to our families or community or nation, nor does it mean that those hurtful actions were okay. Instead, we become softer in our hearts. We can engage in other areas of hurt and conflict with new eyes and a bigger spirit. And there might be that ability to put ourselves in that person's shoes or prison cell of hurt. The iron weight of hatred and resentment falls off its chain attached to our heart and we are able, we're able, feel peace, deep, deep peace. And we need God's grace 
to clear away this dense fog of seeing otherness, of demonization, and especially our self-righteous higher ground stance of theology, morality, politics, or ethics. When I was in training as a hospital chaplain, I received a late night page come to the bedside of a patient who was actively dying with her family around her, and they wanted prayer. The minute I walked into the room and introduced myself as the chaplain, one of the sons jumped up and said, no lady preachers in here, you're an abomination before God. So when I tried to reassure him that I wasn't there to preach, only to pray with them, he yelled, and I bet you're one of those ministers who are going to hell for doing homosexual marriages. I could not respond. I was in shock. And I quietly backed out of the room to leave them alone with her dying mother. And my best choice, thanks to the grace of God, was to start praying. Pray for the family, for consolation as they face the immense loss of their parent. Pray for the mother's peaceful passing. Pray that I didn't go back into that room and give that guy a large piece of my mind wanting retaliation for the insults he'd hurled at me, a queer female chaplain. After an hour or so of seething, I got another page from the same unit. When it reached the nurse's station, the dying woman's daughter was there. And she apologized for her brother. She explained his extreme pain at having just reconnected with his mother after 10 years of estrangement, and now she was dying, and now he hated himself for missing those 10 years. Right then, my exhausted spirit and psyche got a download of grace. Her apology and explanation did not take away my shake and hurt, shock and hurt, but what it did do is grace me with compassion. Because I immediately recalled the pain I experienced of having been estranged from my own mother for 10 years and was only able to reconcile with her shortly before she died. Then the daughter asked me, will you pray for her? Pray for us here at the nurse's station. Sure, I blurted out, and we prayed right there in the hallway for peace, for comfort for their mother, especially for the son, and for the consolation of all their family and their grief. Hearing or reading the news these days, it's hard to believe sometimes that humans are capable of living in nonviolent, peace-filled, and compassionate ways. Yet neuroscientists tell us that we are as hardwired to learn compassion as we are hardwired to learn language, and that we have an innate propensity for kindness. The Charter for Compassion calls us to enact this innate capacity in all areas of our life. And it says it's necessary in both public and private life to refrain consistently and empathically from inflicting pain, to act or speak violently out of spite, chauvinism, or self-interest, to impoverish, exploit, or deny basic rights to anybody, and to incite hatred by denigrating others, even our enemies, is a denial of our common humanity. The practice of compassion, if it's enacted on the fundamental basic level of everyday living, means we don't get to trash talk or dismiss the humanity of or name call those people whose beliefs and statements we disagree with, whose public behaviors, whose choices for vaccinations or not we find offensive or just plain 
wrong. We don't get to do that if we're following the guidance of compassion. To allow that quality of compassion to awake within us calls for the practice of asking in prayer for God's view of another beloved child of God, especially the child of God who spews hate speech or the corrupt politician who's stolen millions or those disruptive protesters or that dictator agitating for war or this person who's lashing out at me and mine on social media. We can receive divine liftoff on eagle's wings where we soar above our pain and hurt and we see the wider, longer view of God's justice, God's mercy, and God's eternal, everlasting love and compassion. We can see this already at work in our broken world. And we will know peace. We know the peace that Christ promises, the peace that passes all understanding. Let us stand and recite the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the, the giver of life, who proceeds from the creator of the Son. She is worshiped and glorified. She has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people, Epiphany season. God of light and love, uh, God of light and life, our prayers rise before you this day in hope and faith. We pray for your church, for our diocese. In our diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for St. Barnabas Church, Falmouth, Christ Church, Harwichport, St. Andrew's Chapel, Hyannisport, St. Paul's Church, Nantucket for congregations, wardens, treasurers, and clerks. We pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, for Alan and Gail, our bishops, for Kate, our rector, for Michael, our seminarian, and for our lay ministers serving today, and for all people. We pray for those celebrating birthdays this week, especially Robert Richardson and Roland Van Cavillar, and those celebrating an anniversary. Flame of abundant love, 
Be our joy in proclaiming your good news to the world. We pray for all who are coming to faith, all who wonder about faith, and all who are struggling with faith. Light of all creation, guide us to lead, teach, and nurture your disciples. We pray for those in need of food, shelter, clothing, and of God's healing touch, especially those for whom our prayers are especially desired. Evan, Bob, Jerry, Jean, Ellen, Barbara, Anne, David, Lynn, Brian, Steve, Dan, Mike, Joyce, Danny, Frank, and Lily, and our shut-ins, Ralph and Jane. We pray for the repose of the soul of William Callahan. We remember Louise Kelly, in whose memory the altar flowers are lovingly given from Ellen Dugas and Allison Kaufman. We pray for those we now name silently aloud or in the chat box or the comments section. For peace for the people of Ukraine. Comforter of the suffering, warm, warm our, our hands, hands to, to loving, loving service. service. We pray for the world, especially where there is trouble and suffering, far away or nearby. Ember of steadfast fear, fuel our passion to challenge injustice and violence and to pursue peace and reconciliation. We pray for the land on which we stand, the peoples, creatures, plant life, and waters around us. Star blaze of glory, lead us to care for this fragile earth, our island home, and to heal the circle of creation. God of radiant light, your love illumines our hopes before we know them and our needs before we ask. Kindle your flame within us, that in our prayers and service, we may know your transforming presence at work in the world around us. All this we ask through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and also with you. Peace, peace to everybody at home. Peace. Wanted to say good morning again on this really beautiful day. And uh, we're especially glad if you're new returning with us that you are so welcome to be with us again. Everyone is welcome at our Eucharist table. We are still staying masked and socially distancing when we approach the altar rail and leaving. So just, uh, you can remove your mask for communion and then put it back on again to go to your pew. Right now, um, we are still not having coffee hour. We may, uh, we're considering opening it back up March, first week of March, which is also Ash Wednesday. 
So mark your calendar. We're going to have two uh, kind of or mini little mini uh, dispersal of ashes. I'll be doing them right out here at the front door for commuters at 7:30 in the morning. So drive through, get some ashes. You're good to go for the day. And then you could come back later that after later that evening. I think it's at six, um, and have our service. Then do not trust me to name times without looking at the calendar. Just say it. But anyway, it's on our calendar in the newsletter. If you haven't signed up for our newsletter, please do so online on our website so you can stay up to date with all the wonderful things we're offering for Lent. Big thing we're offering is a Lenten retreat. Our parish is going to be on retreat with St. John's and Saugus. And we're going to be in person. At this point, it's looking good. So, and we're going to be at Bethany House in Arlington. Lunch will be provided. And it'll be a combination of worship, prayer, reflection, a little bit of quiet time, and some time to wander those beautiful grounds of Bethany House. So we have the flyer in the newsletter. Um, the cost for registration is $30, and you can submit that to the office. And uh, we're really excited to be able to work with St. John's on this. And a special thanks to Beth and Linda, who are on the team, for helping to plan that retreat. So hope you can join us. Um, for right now, we're um, letting go of lunch with the lectionary because we're moving into Lent. So we're going to have a Lenten book study in addition to that. So please look at the newsletter. The book is called Witnessing at the Cross. We'll be collaborating with All Saints in Danvers to do an online Zoom book study with them. So the book's widely available on Amazon, unlike the last book we tried to study. So please get your book and join us online. It'll be on Tuesday evenings, starting in the second week of Lent. So so I uh, hope you can join us. We are asking you to sign up for that also so we know who's coming. So let Sheila know. And I do ask your prayers for Sheila. Uh, her uncle died uh, this past last week, and then uh, she is been very close to him. So please keep uh, her family in your prayers. Gail, you had something you wanted to announce. Yes, thank you. The um, thrift shop needs some help in passing along some boxes and some bags. If you can help do that to, after church, would you get in touch with me? Thank you. Thanks, Kim. And I want to welcome Natasha Rist with us, who is our supply person. Um, and she's uh, hopefully going to be with us. We'll see. We'll be, we'll be talking about this for, uh, uh, throughout Lent and also for Easter, but we're still working on that. So. Um, ben has accepted an assignment in Brookline, so he's there now. And we didn't get to thank him properly for being a supply person, but please send him prayers of gratitude for, uh, for his work with us. All things come of you, O Lord.
We'll continue with the great thanksgiving in your bulletin. God be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We praise you and we bless you, holy and gracious God, source of life abundant. From before time, you made ready the creation. Your spirit moved over the deep and brought all things into being, sun, moon, and stars, earth, winds, and waters, and every living thing. You made us in your image and taught us to walk in your ways. But we rebelled against you and wandered far away, and yet, as a mother cares for her children, you would not forget us. Time and again, you called us to live in the fullness of your love. And so this day, we join with saints and angels in the chorus of praise that rings through eternity, lifting our voices to magnify you as we sing. to deliver us from the power of sin and death and to reveal the riches of your grace. You looked with favor upon Mary, your willing servant, that she might conceive and bear a son, Jesus, the holy child of God. Living among us, Jesus loved us. He broke bread with outcasts and sinners, healed the sick, and proclaimed good news to the poor. He yearned to draw all the world to himself, yet we were heedless of his call to walk in love. Then the time came for him to complete upon the cross the sacrifice of his life and to be glorified by you. On the night before he died for us, Jesus was at table with his friends. He gave thanks to you and he broke it and gave it to them and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine. Again, he gave thanks to you, gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Now gathered at your table, O God of all creation, and remembering Christ crucified and risen, who was and is and is to come, we offer you our gifts of bread and wine and ourselves a living sacrifice. Pour out your spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the body and the blood of Christ. Breathe your spirit over the whole earth and make us your new creation, the body of Christ given for the world you have made. In the fullness of time, bring us with all your saints from every tribe and language and people and nation to feast at the banquet prepared from the foundation of the world. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor, glory, and praise be to you forever and ever.
the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. So at this time, I invite our folks worshiping with us at home into spiritual communion. And please feel free to use the meditation prayer for spiritual Eucharist at home. So we have a brief moment of silence in communion with them. Body of Christ, bread of heaven. Blood of Christ, cup of salvation. Continue with the post communion prayer in your bulletin. Loving God, we give you thanks for restoring us in your image and nourishing us with spiritual food and the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. Then send us forth a people forgiven, healed, renewed, that we may proclaim your love to the world 
and continue in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. Is the Epiphany blessing? May Almighty God, who led the wise men by the shining of a star to find the Christ, the light from light, lead you also in your pilgrimage to find the Lord. Amen. May God, by the power that turned water into wine at the wedding feast at Cana, transform your lives and make glad your hearts. Amen. May Christ, the Son of God, be manifest in you, that your lives may be a light to the world and the blessing of God, Almighty Creator, Redeemer, and Sanctifier be among you and remain with you always. Let us go forth into the world, loving our neighbor, loving ourselves, loving our enemies, rejoicing in the power of God's spirit to help us. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. 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 Alleluia.